In this tutorial, we'll illustrate the basics of taking a reflection measurement using SpectraSuite software from Ocean Optics. For more information on installing SpectraSuite, be sure to visit our website at oceanoptics.com. For performing reflection measurements, you will need a spectrometer, light source, reflection probe, reflection standard, and SpectraSuite software. In this demonstration, we will be using a USB 4000 spectrometer, an HL2000HP tungsten halogen light source, a QR4000-7 Viz NIR reflection probe, a WS1 PTFE diffuse reflection standard, and an RPH1 reflection probe holder. It's important to connect each end of the reflection probe to the appropriate device. The SMA905 connector with the six illumination fibers should be connected to the light source. The SMA905 connector with the single reed fiber should be connected to the spectrometer. For reflection measurements, it is also critical that all reference and sample measurements be taken at the same distance from the tip of the reflection probe to the sample. The RPH1 reflection probe holder ensures that this distance is fixed and the same for all measurements. Insert the reflection probe barrel into the hole cut at a 45 degree angle and tighten the screw to secure the ferrule into the RPH1. At this stage, you should place the RPH1 probe holder onto the white standard. The standard is an ideal reference because it's nearly 100% reflective. Next. Connect the power supply to your light source and turn it on. Make sure to let the light source warm up if necessary before performing your experiment. Now connect the appropriate ends of your USB cable to the spectrometer and to your PC. When your setup is fully connected, launch SpectraSuite. You should be greeted with the SpectraSuite interface showing a picture of your spectrometer in the data sources pane. Now we'll demonstrate how to use one of SpectraSuite's processing mode wizards to perform a basic reflection measurement. To start the wizard, click on File, then New, then Reflection Measurement in the top menu. This launches the Reflection Measurement Wizard. Make sure that your spectrometer is highlighted in blue as the source for spectral acquisitions, then click Next. Click on the Set Automatically button. This allows SpectraSuite to find the ideal integration time for the reflection measurement. The integration time is correct when both the last peak value and the recommended peak values are both black text. You may have to click on the button more than once. Let's also set 10 scans to average and a boxcar width of 5. This will increase the signal to noise ratio and smooth the spectrum. Once you have set these parameters, click Next. Click on the yellow light bulb button to store the reference. Once the reference is stored, a preview of the spectrum is shown in the Reference Spectrum Preview pane. Now click Next. Close the shutter on your light source to block the incident light, and then click on the gray light bulb button to store the dark spectrum. Now click Finish. You will now be back at the main SpectraSuite window. Here you'll see a flat spectrum at 100% reflection with noisy data at the extremes. This noisy data is due to the lack of signal from the light source in these regions. Now place the RPH1 on the sample to be measured. In this demonstration, we'll be measuring an orange piece of note paper. The reflection spectrum is shown in the graph pane. To save this reflection spectrum, simply click Save Spectrum. Browse to a location where you would like to save the file, give the file a desired name, and click Save. Select the file type you wish to save, click Save, and then click Close. The spectrum is now saved in the directory you specified. Now we'll demonstrate how to set acquisition parameters in store reference and dark spectra without using the wizard. Let's start by clicking the Pause Selected Acquisition button in the Acquisition Controls toolbar. 
You've seen how the wizard works. Now here's another way to get into absorbance mode in just a few simple steps. Start by clicking on the Graph A tab in the Graph pane. Now click the Acquisition Parameters in the Data Sources pane. This will ensure that we are adjusting the acquisition parameters for Graph A and activating the Acquisition and Acquisition Control toolbars. Now let's set the parameters to values that we used in the last experiment. For this example, we set the integration time to 24 milliseconds, with the same 10 scans to average and a boxcar width of 5. Click on the Spectrum graph to activate the icons. Now with the RPH1 on the standard and the shutter open, click the Store Reference Spectrum or yellow light bulb icon. This stores the reference spectrum. With the shutter closed and the RPH1 still on the standard, click the Store Dark Spectrum icon. Once you have stored the reference and dark spectrum, you should see the process mode icons activate. Now open the shutter. Clicking on the reflection icon changes the graph into a reflection process mode. You should now see the flat spectrum at 100% reflection, just as you saw before. Now place the RPH1 on the sample to be measured, just as before. You should see a similar reflection spectrum to the one you arrived at via the wizard. Clicking back and forth between Graph A and Graph B tabs, you can see that the same reflection spectrum was obtained by both methods. These easy steps will get you started with basic reflection measurements. For more information, visit our website at oceanoptics.com. You can also contact us via email at info at oceanoptics.com.